this is really where the distance formula starts to kind of come into its own. Um, so let's be really honest with ourselves. Like if you had to do these two problems, um, the distance formula probably isn't the easiest way to do it because they're on the grid and the numbers are relatively small. I probably would have just drawn in triangles and used the Pythagorean theorem. Like that's why I would personally done myself. Um, but that's the reason why we want to be dynamic problem solvers is so we can start choosing methods. Um, for this one, we don't actually have a grid. And even though we are dealing with a line segment, we don't have a nice picture to go off of anymore. And so like we don't really have the possibility of using, say, that drawing the triangle in, find the endpoints. Um, and so like this one's almost like purely a distance formula problem. The reason I'm saying that is because if you look at our inputs, um, we're given that we have the segment and we have endpoints, which means like this is the first endpoint um, and this is like the second endpoint, which means we can actually designate these pieces as X, X1, Y1s and X2, Y2s. And so if this is like the first point, this negative 8 becomes like our X1 value, this 7 becomes like our Y1 value. Um, and then for the the second one, the six is going to become like our x two value, and the four is going to become like our y two value, right? Um, and so now, so we, so going back to like this, like the basics, we want to use a distance formula. We actually do have the information to operate it. We have a line, and we have endpoints. Um, if we have endpoints, that's all we need to feed into the formula, so we can go right there. Um, so the distance, if you recall, is the same as uh, x two minus x1 squared um, plus y2 minus y1 squared, right? Um, and so now it's just an issue of picking out the pieces and getting into the formula. Um, so I'm going to do a little setup here with my work because I said the subtraction problems from each one. I still got to square it before I add. Um, so now in terms of picking out the pieces, why well, I need the x2 value. Well, there's the x2 value, so that's going to give me 6. The x1 value is over on this side. That's going to be a negative 8. Be careful. This negative in the problem and this is a negative on the number, so that will be two negatives. Moving on to the second part, we have y2, which in this case is going to be 4. Um, subtracting off our y1 value, which is going to be 7. Um, so continue our arithmetic. Um, remember that's going to be plus. And so that's 6 plus 8, which is going to give us 14. 4 minus 7, which would be negative 3, before I square it. Okay. Order of operation says take care of the exponents next, so I need 14 squared. Well, I don't actually have that number in my head, so let me pull that up. Uh, so 14 squared would be 196. Negative 3 squared, negative 3 times negative 3 is going to give you a 9. Okay. Um, and so now we're down to finishing our arithmetic values here. Um, so 196, so the distance here will be the same thing as 196 plus 9. Um, so let's see, that would be 205, I believe. Um, you guys can double check that. I'll double check it too. 186 plus 9 um, is going to be 205. Um, so again, we could leave our answer in this way. I don't think we uh, we should, though, because we have a calculator. We have the access to actually approximate the squared value. And so if I approximate the squared value of 205, um, I get 14.31. In this case, we'll round up to 8. And so this is like purely a distance formula problem. Unlike these other ones where we kind of have this bailout where we can have, um, let's say, a right triangle. We can draw on the right triangle and just do some counting and then use Pythagorean theorem. Um, this we're just given the endpoint information. No picture, no grid to go off of. And although I guess we could draw it on the grid and then replicate yes, using the Pythagorean theorem, this is why we have the distance formula. The distance formula requires points. Um, X1, y, y1, X2, Y2s. Um, and since that's all we were given, we actually can operate this formula right away. There's some tricky arithmetic in here, but it's something that you can't take care of if you concentrate and just practice enough. Uh, but in the end, we have our distance without even having to have a picture, uh, which I think is really cool. Right? Um, so uh, in the next video, I'll go ahead and finish the last one, and I'll give you maybe a different way to think about it too. Um, because distance formula can be messy, but if you kind of understand what x2 minus x1 means and y2 minus 1 means, you'll see it's actually a really nice shortcut. Okay, but we'll talk about that in the next video.